Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic day wherever you are around this beautiful planet of ours. This morning, we are seeing Bitcoin drop to new cycle lows. The total cryptocurrency market cap is dropping well within the final capitulation zone. And for the stock markets, we are still seeing good signs of a bottom forming. So we're definitely getting the divergence here between cryptos, Bitcoin, and the stock market. We wanna find out why this is happening how long can it go on for and what about the US dollar and how this is affecting Bitcoin and cryptos right now. And right now, smash up like, subscribe, bell notification icon, do those good things down below if you please to. All right, let's start with the total cryptocurrency market cap and where we are at today, dropping to 740 billion, taking out the June low of 760 billion. Now this was on the previous videos uh, this week actually, just within the last five days, we've got a worst case on crypto, worst case on Bitcoin looking to those bottoms. Obviously this is after the FTX collapse, the saga, the scandal, uh, and the fact that a lot of people are still thinking there is a lot left in the market after the FTX. We've seen a lot of those huge news headlines come out for the comparison of FTX and the likes of Lehman Brothers in 2008 and why that then means that Bitcoin should go down further. Uh, the other thing that we're also seeing is a, a lot of uh, ranges waiting at 10K or below. Sure, 12 and 13 might be a good one here for Edon, but the fact that a lot of people are still waiting for extra low prices is also another signal that maybe they're not going to see them like what we've seen in the past and what we've covered here on the channel before. And so just to recap this chart here, Bitcoin, US dollar, the safe, the not great, and the worst case scenario. Anything in this zone here is okay. It's a hold above the previous support levels of the June top. It's also the monthly closes for the previous bull market cycle. And that basically just le leans us towards a, a good support zone somewhere the market can consolidate and still find relative strength and good structure towards the market, good bullish structure moving forward. Obviously this is bearish, we're down, but basically a good area to consolidate for the next run up. Things that start to consolidate, price targets, price movements that start to consolidate under these levels, so under that previous top and within the zone is not great and it's probably just gonna draw out any sort of accumulation here before we get that next pump up. That doesn't affect the four-year cycles. It just means that the lows are going to be a lot longer. You're going to see more uh, boring time in the market. We're going to see more people leave. There's going to be less talk about it. So the moves are going to be much more difficult to come by. Now, if it does drop below the $10,000 level, that is very bad. That is the worst case that I would want to see for Bitcoin to at least hold any sort of integrity for making it back to 30, 40, 50K. Because anything under these levels here, which is where the breakout was, is very, very weak for Bitcoin after this particular, uh, you know, obviously during this crash within this part of the cycle. Now, I don't think it's going to get to this point. These have been some of the levels that we've been looking at prior. That's part of the cycle bottom zone that we're looking at between 11.5 and 19.5Ks for a Bitcoin buying zone. Uh, so anything under here is worst case for Bitcoin to at least hold any sort of integrity moving forward. Now, we're starting to see a lot more calls for under six grand, under three grand. If that's to happen, I don't even know if I want to be buying Bitcoin if it's able to drop that low and hold out that low, you know, get weekly and monthly closes that low. Spikes in the market we've seen before happen and then reverse quite quickly. That's a different story. But anything holding out under these zones, people hold, waiting out for three and 6K Bitcoin, it's probably not a good thing for Bitcoin fundamentally long term, which would then mean even longer and maybe you only ever see pumps up to 10 or 20K again. We don't know, but you don't want to see markets break down critical uh, structural support just for the sake of a 3 or 6K Bitcoin, because then that could mean that the actual asset itself is not good anymore. It's not a good investment going forward. And we see that very, very often when it comes to cryptocurrencies. So anything out of that top 20,000 uh, 20, in cryptos, if they had to break down below their previous support level, so you've got the previous tops that they had in the cycle, uh, the previous breakout zones they had in the cycle, even the previous lows they had, that is extremely weak. And if that's to happen, it's not a crypto that I think 
well, it's another crypto that I'll be buying. I can't give you financial advice, but if it were my my friends, I would definitely be saying, do not buy these things if they break critical support. And people tend to hang out for those lower prices. What we can do is wait and see whether the markets fall into a final capitulation zone, you know, a worst case, and then start to reverse and break through some bearish structure. One of the bearish structures is the bear market downtrend. So we're still under that for the total cryptocurrency market cap. We're underneath the 50% level here and we'll be able to find some more levels as the market consolidates and breaks above. So we'll be able to get some monthly swing tops, which at the moment is uh, above here at 1.18 trillion for the total cryptocurrency market cap. A nice level there that came in during the previous bear market of 2021. Uh, so anything above that level as well also starts to bring back integrity to the structure of the bull market and the consolidation, which could then be accumulation for the cryptocurrency market. So moving forward after this little crash today so far, as I record, we're at 744 billion on the total cryptocurrency market cap. We probably don't want to see this go any further than this level here at about 530, worst case capitulation zone, about 390, call it around a $400 billion level. I think that's a it's a fair stretch, especially with the amount of stable coins that are still involved. One point, uh, sorry, 150 odd billion worth. So that would then leave us pretty dire if we were to get back to the levels underneath here at 300, which would then mean 150 being stable coins, which would then mean only about 150 billion left in the market, including this time Bitcoin and Ethereum, which is probably not likely. So uh, just as a clarification, this is the zone that we don't want to, uh, this is the zone that we want to see the capitulation form in and then break above the bear market downtrend, break above any of the monthly tops, which may form lower down and then break back above 50% levels to continue on with the integrity of the next stage of the bull market. That's Bitcoin and cryptos. And as for the bottom rounding across the traditional markets, now before we get onto the macro analysis of the traditional markets, the bottom's forming, the collapse is over, all the crisis and the panic that is being spread out there, check out the Black Friday specials. This is where we talk a lot more about this in detail, about our investment plans, our trading plans. Uh, put your email address down here, tiacrypto.com forward slash subscribe. Biggest sale of the year with our new membership out there. Also, Bybit and BitGet. Yes, they are crypto exchanges. Do not hold more on those exchanges than you are willing to lose. We are still in a bear market, uh, but they do have big specials at the moment. So stay safe out there. And the other Black Friday specials I have down here in the descriptions, TradingView up to 60%, Ledger up to 30 bucks free, and then Coinly as well if you're looking to do your crypto taxes. Now, back to the stock market as well, as this is leading into the rest of the real estate cycle and that second leg, that's that next bull market, for Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, at least the way that I'm reading the market here, is the S&P still using the macro support here, 3,500 points, previous tops, massive 50% level, market has now bounced from that particular level and we are heading towards our next target. Even though it's been a little slow the last week and a half, uh, we're still about four weeks to go. Hopefully we can get there within that four weeks. I, uh, Either way, we still want to hit the price target and still be above the low after nine weeks. So it's not critical that we do it in the four weeks, but ideally that would be a similar time frame to the previous bounce. And in terms of a percentage, how far do we have to go from the current price to the target level of 42? It's about 6.4%. So it's not far to go now for the S&P to reach the next critical uh, target for rounding out this bottom for the macro markets. Through this entire period, we've got the June low here, we have the October low, the price is now above the June low. Yes, I've been talking about it for quite some time for the bottoms, but I also said at that time that bottoms take months to form. And what we've seen in the past is a move up from October, possibly into November, December, and then back down into sort of February, March. The back down period does not mean that we break this low. Now it could go a little bit lower, but what I'm expecting should we break this point so there's the if then we would get a higher low form sometime into uh, february march april of 2023 so this is going to take some time to play out people are still extremely fearful which is expected at bottoms they think we're going to go on another gfc collapse 
It's too early for that. These are the times that people will be looking back on in 24 months, 36 months and saying, damn, that was the low and I missed out on it. This low was nice and quick. It was a V-shaped recovery. People missed out and the market took off without them. This is probably going to happen again, but except it's going to be a grind out. That's what it's looking like so far uh, until we can hit those targets and see whether we hold above and consolidate above that 4142 or we hit it and fade back down to try and build up again throughout 2023. On the other hand, tech stocks are not going to fare as well. Remember, this is the S&P. There's top 500 companies. Yes, there are tech stocks in it, but overall for the NASDAQ, this is much weaker than the S&P. So when I talk about the stock markets, this is the gold market here, the one that is the biggest in the world. Then we have the NASDAQ, which is definitely weaker. Technically speaking, it is definitely weaker. We can obviously have seen that many of the tech stocks uh, have been down. Doesn't mean they won't get some good bounces, but in the second half of this cycle leading into 2026, we've been covering here for quite some time, these are not going to be the ones that you could bet on to break into new all-time highs, especially after being down 80 odd percent. That's just speaking of probabilities and what we've seen in the past from the previous cycle, which we have data from. So you had the dot-com bubble, the peak into 2000, uh, early 2000, and that was a subsequent cr uh, crash. And the market did come back, but it's not a very good run up for tech stocks during this second stage of the cycle. You get the crash and then it's time for tech stocks. Then they can go on another big boom, but that is not for many, many years to come. The other big piece to all of this is the US dollar. Now we're seeing a rally here over the course of this week and finishing last week. This is probably what is putting a lot of pressure on Bitcoin and some cryptos. It's not having much effect on the S&P at the moment because this is obviously in a stronger position. But in terms of the move up, anything under this 110, 110 and a half is probably a bit of a rally from this mini bear market from the top here that we called in September uh, coming all the way down and then the bounce up here probably going to be short-lived now looking back just only in this last uh, two years you've seen some periods of eight months down and uh, sorry eight bars down being eight weeks because we're on a weekly chart and then seven weeks down and so the reversals within the bull market were ranging from two weeks all the way up to many many weeks here but if we take a look back in the downtrend here, this went 13.38% down from the top, uh, which is potentially the same stage that we're in here with a more uh, macro reversal on the USD. You can see that any of these moves on the weekly chart were very, very short lived. One, two, maybe three weeks, but the majority of these have just been one to two week turns. You can see the peak came in here in March 2020, down one week up, down two weeks up, down one week, one week. Uh, one, one and a half, two weeks here, one week up. You can just see that every single time that it bounced back over the course of nearly 12 months, that comes into March here, it was very, very short lived. But once we start to see more weeks going up than we saw during the rise, so we can see here all of these are about one to two weeks. Here is your bottom there into 2021. And then you start to see many more weeks coming out. That is the signal that USD is starting to turn. But that could be many, many, many months away if, in fact, we, we do get that at all to come back and test any of those previous highs. So what we're looking at here is a potential move up probably this week or next week to, to finalize this move somewhere below 110, 110 and a half would be lovely. And then that could then lead on to a bottoming the continuing bottoming pattern for Bitcoin, um, not necessarily cryptos, but potentially Bitcoin, which would then give it a little more relief moving forward during this hopeful uh, accumulation period for BTC. So we have a lot of positive stuff coming out for the S&P, holding up relatively well, not so much for the NASDAQ. It could move anywhere below 9,000. We'll continue to update that on the channel. USD, potentially this week or next week, we'll start to see a bit of a, a top forming here, hopefully under that 110, 110 and a half. Moving on to Bitcoin, this would hopefully then lead to the final capitulation, that final little drop into price, or at least the scare that goes on in the market, all the, the energy, the emotion, the market excitement, and we get that final drop before we can start to move forward again and continue to consolidate during this period here. But overall, the main thing that we don't wanna see for BTC 
is consolidating under the 14K level and worst off any sort of consolidation under the 10K level. That would bring a lot of pain to the market and a lot of drawn out uh, time and price underneath these levels. Top of the video description for the Black Friday specials like this little button here for your fireworks display, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon, do all those monkey things that YouTube makes us do. Hopefully you got some value from that and you are set in your investment plans moving forward into this next stage, which is likely to be very, very exciting. Check out the videos popping up on the left-hand side here for more trading and investing in cryptos and traditional markets. I'll see you at the next video. Have a great day. Until then, peace out.